Does your yard or driveway turn into a duck pond when it rains? If it does, then you need to install the sump basin drainage system in your yard. In this video, I will show you how to DIY this drainage system from start to finish. Be sure to stay to the end of the video for my waterfall finale and the cost of this installation. First thing you got to do here is you got to start digging a hole at least two feet deep by about 20 inches wide. Hopefully you only have dirt to deal with, otherwise you're going to have to cut back concrete. And here's my first obstacle. Turns out my neighbor's irrigation line is directly in the center of where my basin needs to go. So I need to cut this and reroute it. I just put that bucket there because I wasn't sure how much water was going to come out of there. So I'm going to run the new line up and around this post and reconnect it with a bunch of 90s. My neighbor was nice enough to supply the materials and I did the labor. Thanks, Grant. How doers get more done. And I'm a doer, so let's get this jackal out of the box here. So this sump basin here is a 20-gallon, made in the USA. Woo! -hoo. Anyway, uh, it's a pretty big one. It's robust. It's well-made. Uh, good quality. And it's got a screw-on lid, too, that's also perforated. Okay, so right here we got the uh, river pebbles, which I'm going to use for the bottom and around the basin. Step one with the rocks is to put one bag at the bottom of the hole, and then we're going to sit the basin on top of it to give it a firm base. Okay, so now the basin is all leveled. The basin is now set in place and is ready for the next step, which is going to be unboxing this Wayne three-quarter horsepower sump pump. This is a standard 120 volt cord that needs to be plugged into a GFCI receptacle. As the basin fills with water, the float goes all the way up, which turns on the sump pump. So right here, what I need to do next is add a PVC fitting to this part of the pump. Just a PVC fitting. Now I just need to put some Teflon tape over it. I, I prefer to use the, uh, the red packaged uh, Teflon. It seems to be thicker. Just got to screw it in there now and snug it up. You don't want to crank it too tight. You may break it. So now it's time to dry fit the sump pump and the fittings, including the check valve and the inch and a half schedule 40 pipe I have right here. You always want to dry fit everything when it comes to, you know, plumbing because you're going to have to glue it later. So you don't want to glue it too quickly and find out you cut it wrong. So I'm measuring the inside of the fittings. Uh, that way there I can get an accurate measurement of what I need to do here. File that off, make sure there's no uh, burrs on the end. Now this here is the check valve. And notice that arrow with the flow on it. That's got to be in the right direction, otherwise this will not work. Purpose of a check valve is to stop the water that you just ejected from coming back into the basin. So this here is the 90 degree fitting that's going to connect the lateral pipe to the sump pump pipe. Now I need to cut a hole in the basin with this hole saw bit. Be careful doing this because this had quite the kickback on it. And man, I felt like I was going to sprain my wrist. I had, two, I had to put two hands on it. Okay, now I'm just continuing to dry fit the pipes. Let's make sure they're lining up correctly. I got all the right parts cut to the right measurements. And right here I made a makeshift saw horse just to keep this pipe you know, somewhat level so I can get an accurate reading when I'm cutting my last piece in here. Okay, all the dry fittings done here on the ground. Let's take the basin now and put it back in the hole. What I do is I put a block inside the basin to keep it from shifting as I poured more uh, river pebbles around it to keep it in place. I had to do a little demo work on my concrete piers that support my carport because they were like touching the driveway so I couldn't get the pipe in the ground. So I just chipped away a little bit. I didn't undermine the, the footing at all, but this here is the uh, Makita I used to break everything apart. And a little tip for you, when you're renting something at Home Depot, rent it for the full day because it's only like 20, 30 bucks more than half day rental. 
So I just finished laying out all my pipe on the driveway to make everything easily accessible. And here's the fittings I'm going to use to put everything together. So now I'm putting the pump back inside the basin. As you can see, everything lines up perfectly because I already dry fit it. Okay, so now it's time to put these pipes together permanently. So you're going to need purple primer and the all-purpose cement. You can get this at Home Depot. What you want to do is really coat the edges here of both pieces and then do it again. And you want to get that as dark purple as possible. And then once you've done that, you can put the cement on. Put the cement on both pieces, just like you did the primer. And then when you push it down, hold it for at least 15 seconds so because it does have a tendency to push back out. So once again, here's the check valve. Follow the arrow. Make sure the arrow is going the right direction, which would be up in this situation. You're going to tighten down this clamp. Don't crank it too hard. You don't need to. And once again, now we're going to put more primer on the 90. And now that we get everything back into the basin, we are going to start gluing together the lateral pipe to the pump. Once again, this takes a little bit of muscle to turn this, so take your time with it. Same with these fittings. you got to hold them there for like 15 seconds. Just consider this part your arm and shoulder workout for the day. Okay, so this part here is slow and time-consuming, and it'll take quite some time to get it done. My yard required at least eight of these 10-foot pipes, so I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this, and I'm just going to start fast-forwarding here, get you to the end run, which is my last cut piece. So first thing i got to show you is these pieces here. This is the white PVC adapter, which goes from an inch and a half to three inch. I had to buy this on Amazon. I could not find it at Home Depot. So now we're going to take this uh, rubber connector with a shield wrapped around it, and we're going to connect those two together. And then we're going to connect the pop-up emitter to there. The reason why I use that uh, metal shielded connector is that way there, um, if I ever drove over the pop-up emitter, I could just replace it. If, if I break it, I can easily replace it just by loosening up this clamp as opposed to cutting pipe and then re-gluing uh, pipe together. Okay, so now I'm just going to attach my pop-up emitter to my uh, rubber coupler and the inch and a half by three inch adapter. I'm having a little hard time here because I forgot to loosen up the clamp. So there we go. Okay, I get that in there. And once again, we're gonna dry fit this before I glue it to make sure it's right. So hopefully this is my last cut right here and we can move forward. So here we go, we'll clean that up a little bit. Let's dry fit these pieces together. Make sure everything's the right length. Here we go, everything's good. So now I'm gluing on priming, then gluing all the pieces. Once again, don't forget to hold those the pipes together so they don't push out on you. And I do have blocks of wood underneath the lateral pipe, as you can see in the dirt there. And that was to keep the uh, pipe from touching the dirt so I didn't get dirt and grime all over my glue and my primer. And I don't know if you caught that, but I put that clamp on upside down, which means I couldn't reach the bolts. Okay, everything's installed. Yeehaw. Now all I got to do is plug it into the GFCI receptacle that was installed by Electric Brothers. In the meantime, I am just going to sit back and enjoy the sun while it lasts before we get some rain. All right, look at the rain coming down right here. Whoa. We're going to test out my sump pump right there. Check it out. There is no standing water over there whatsoever. Look at that. All that water is going right into that sump pump and it's getting pushed out out the front. Let me show you. You can see it getting pushed out right there. That's working really good. I was quoted $4,000 for this installation. I installed it myself for under $500. Please leave your comments below if you have any questions about the installation and stay dry, my friends.